fair to say that we're overdue for the big one, and a lot of people think it's gonna happen in the next de decade or two. What? I have no idea what to do in an actual earthquake. I don't feel safe in this place. I would love to prepare for a big night out, but, but we're, 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 it's a very serious video about earthquakes. Today, the Try Guys are going to learn exactly what you should do in an earthquake and how you can be prepared for one. Earlier this summer, we had two pretty big earthquakes in California. I was in a restaurant with my grandmother, celebrating her birthday, because I'm a cutie. Everyone in the restaurant, we just sat there and stared. There are these giant chandeliers shaking right above my head. No one moved. No one did anything. I realize I have no idea what to do in an actual earthquake. Flail your arms and say, oh my god, it's an earthquake! Do I lay down? Get in between the door frame? Was I supposed to get under the table? Was I supposed to run outside? What if the table breaks? Now you're under a broken table! Get to a bathtub and put a mattress over it! I'm not prepared. So we got together and we said, we need to figure this out. We are joined today by the CEO of the LA Red Cross. Because you gotta be ready. I'm not. And when we prepare for earthquakes, a lot of times what we talk about is preparing for the big one. In Southern California, where we are, there's often two or three small ones in a day. What? And they just happen. I know you're supposed to have an emergency kit. I don't have one. I don't have any water. I got like one jug in the closet. I literally have a jug. What are some of the dangers of earthquakes? Like death. Death? A seven or an eight point earthquake really scary and also can be really fatal. We don't know when it's gonna happen. There's no earthquake season, but we can get prepared because it might happen in our lifetimes. Well, I don't know if our office is fortified for an earthquake. I have no idea. I don't feel safe in this place. It's just an old house. Like, this is an old building. In developed countries like the United States, where we have building codes that anticipate earthquakes, you're probably safer here than you would be in a place that doesn't have those things. This house probably built, looks like in the 20s or the 30s, maybe? Which means, unless you've done something to it, it was probably built before those codes. We've uh, done nothing to it. Oh, we've done we're, nothing well, we've done some things to it, but nothing to help it. This part of your house looks like it was an addition. You've got yeah. poured concrete foundation. So this is probably a, a pretty safe room relative oh, yes. to the rest of the house. Wow. An earthquake happens right now. Right. What are the do's and don'ts? What should we do? Uh, I do know you shouldn't try and run anywhere that most injuries happen when you're trying to run across the room, you slip, and then boom, you hit your head. You should stay away from windows, and you should stay away from things that can fall on you. I feel like every time I think I know what you're supposed to do, I read something else telling me, no, that's actually the worst thing. When I was growing up, they were like, get under door frames. Door frames are your friend. Now everyone's like, door frames, bad. A four point or a five point earthquake can be scary, but your house isn't gonna fall down on top of you. Drop, cover, Hold on. Now, I know we said these were IKEA desks, so, but if you get under it, two of you can fit under there. This desk is better than that one because you're gonna have broken glass over there. Uh, Fuck. The closer inside, get you under, can be, get, get, get under. The better. Injuries to your head are the most serious, you know, because fall and falling things, right? You can break a bone, you, your head, you know, you concussion, much more serious. Now, if there's no room, Eugene, and you're still right there, yeah, get on the couch, get the cushions, and hold onto your head with the cushions on top, right? Like you, no, no, lay, lay, down, down some, down, down no, some, you, yeah, exactly. Down. Cover your head like this. <laughs> right. Cushions, Cushions on, top. on top. No, on top no, of your head. head. Your not head. your butt. Ooh. I should probably. I think you got the Get on top straw. of Eugene. No, and, and <laughs> no, there's no room here. <laughs> and then I'm protecting here. him, and he's protecting me. Get under this table. But you said that here. table's bad. Well, it's bad, but it's better than not being covered. But you said you were tiny enough to fit under that table. Yeah, do yeah it. try it. Go for God. it, Zach. I don't know. Did he make it? Do you see uh, it? His head's safe. My head's safe. Well, you made it. Okay, the ground <laughs> stopped shaking. <laughs> Don'ts. Don't stand in a doorway if there's a door. The door will shut on you. So you're standing in the doorway, the door's gonna slam shut, and you're gonna be falling to the ground. <laughs> If it's an opening, a framed opening without a door, it's probably okay to hold on to. The beauty of the door for me is that you can oh, hold on, but my arms, and I'm 6'2", I, I don't really, I'm not really tall enough for this. You, you, might, you might be, you might be, oh, just sort of. I can do this. What about you brace up here? Um, you know, it's, I would say, if this is all you've got, it's better than standing in the middle of the room. Mm. Now that, 
door entry in the next room might be uh, something. There's no door here, Mom. right? That's what you want to be careful of. This might be okay, but there's still better options in this room. You've got four desks that you can get under right here. What about be... this uh, bowl of thumbtacks? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that be on the floor. Oh, it'll never be affected. Don't put heavy things on the wall behind you because they could fall Keep and kill no. you. <laughs> exactly. Those are probably okay, but a large portrait. All your pictures on the wall are gonna, unless you've got the right hooks on them, can we maybe Please. take something off and look yeah, at your sure. hooks? Sure. With one little screw, this is gonna fly right off. <laughs> Sure a a, a 69 around. cent earthquake hook for your picture will keep those pictures on the wall. Mm -hmm. right? Something's gonna fly at you. I mean, beautiful faces. It is a nice, it is a nice thing to It'll be a you. fun last moment. <laughs> <laughs> then there's some more serious stuff. Televisions, bookcases, things that are top heavy, they might come flying at you, right? So bolting them to the wall can earthquake proof your home. Now that I have a baby, I'm terrified of what could happen to the baby in an earthquake. Even just like a book falling off a bookshelf could hurt him. Oh, oh, oh Wesley. You guys have mentioned how much you love the television. We this, love the TV. This television is gonna be flying across the room. Oh yeah. This is definitely not attached. This is gonna go flying somewhere. A really heavy bookcase right over there that fell, is gonna fall right on top of you. To think that our beautiful book could both change your life and in the wrong case, end it. Whoa. We get your copy today. <laughs> and then bolt it. Those child safety hooks that you put on your cabinets, well, those are actually really useful for earthquakes, right? Nice. You know? I'm covered. That, there you got the kids, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because your cabinet's gonna open and all your dishes and glasses are gonna pour out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I always feel like I'm in danger in a kitchen. You are, during an earthquake, there's a lot to put at risk here. If you can, I would say, yeah, you can get under this table, but if you can get to the desk in the room next door, there's just a lot less to hurt you. When they modeled what the big one would look like, the biggest source of damage was not actually damage to homes from the shaking, but damage that resulted from fires after the earthquake. What? Because of the gas. Hopefully you've got one of those automatic shutoff valves. If not, you need to shut off the gas. First thing you need to do. This is also probably the place, if there's a gas leak, that you're gonna smell it first. I think yeah. it's, it's a hazard to have so much alcohol. Probably a uh, good point. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're full of wine, we'll be a little more fluid, like a mm -hmm. giant skyscraper. <laughs> exactly. It's really understanding the shake potential of where you are. You guys would really need to get out, I would say get out of this room, because all that stuff, those shelves are gonna fall, everything from there's <laughs> oh gonna come God. flying at you. But earthquake funny. hooks on those cabinets, that stuff's still gonna go flying. What about just like a hammer hanging out on a hook that immediately fell? Yeah, that, that might be better in a toolbox on the ground somewhere, so it doesn't come flying as a projectile. No, but Will, you, Will, you love you love the hammer on the hook, I right? I love it. I look over there and I, and I salute it every day. Yeah, it inspires our team. <laughs> we have to reteach folks, don't run outside. Why not? Stay, because think about what an 8.0 earthquake looks like, right? You're gonna fall down. You're gonna get slammed by the door, glasses everywhere. You're gonna get your feet cut. Then the house is gonna pancake on top of you. You're trying to run outside. I mean, a million things could happen. You're much safer under a table holding on till it's done. Whose desk is the safest? Uh, again, furthest from the window, probably best. So maybe that one. I no. will show you that usually my desk is a standing desk. You'd probably be safe underneath, but it's gonna fly off. So could hurt that person hiding under there. Zach, no. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be injured, but my posture will be impeccable. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if we're outside during an earthquake, uh, this is a bad place to be. Yeah. You've got a lot of trees. Yeah. And you've got a lot of power cables. Like, yeah. lots of power cables. They're like eight billion power cables. It could electrocute you if you were to, it were to come into contact with you, which is the biggest reason. I think you may want to get as quickly as possible inside and under something. I say this backyard is somewhat of a hazard, uh, even just normally. We got giant branches fall falling really almost daily, so try to spend not so much time back here, earthquake or otherwise. People refer to the Northridge earthquake in 94 as the last big earthquake we had. The death toll from yesterday's quake has gone up to 33 this morning. It's a little deceptive because it wasn't actually the big one. When we talk about preparing for the big one, it's probably something a little bit more dramatic. This white, the beam wood ceiling was the ceiling of your home. 
correct, that's the ceiling. So you think the big one to come would be bigger than that was? Typically, Southern California has a big one earthquake every couple of hundred years, and there hasn't been one for about 300 years. Fair to say that we're overdue, and a lot of people think it's going to happen in the next de decade or two. Walk us through if like an 8.0 earthquake hits, what's going to happen? What's not going to happen? You can't call 911 after the earthquake, because when 10 million people call 911, nobody comes. That's what the big one's going to look like. That's why getting ready is so important. Oh, wow. What do you do? What if everything totally falls apart? We don't know, you don't know where you're gonna be when the earthquake happens, how bad it's gonna be, but what you can control are what you have with the materials at hand, right? In your car, at work, and at home. Well, let's say the unthinkable has happened and everything has gone to shit. Luckily, you're smart and you have an emergency preparedness bag. What's inside? How do you use it? We're gonna find out. So this is a this is an urban survival kit that we found online. Like just some basic stuff. People think food and water, uh, but have enough about a gallon a day powers out two or three weeks. You're gonna be living off canned food. We typically recommend plan for 10 to 14 days on your own. Uh, first thing I see is toilet paper, green glow sticks so you can poop and see how and your poop see. looks to see if you're eating well. You're not gonna have gas. You're not gonna have, what else? Trash bags. Trash bags. I would have not have thought of this, but very versatile. These are for poop. Because you might not have plumbing. Oh. Why are the bags so big? How big are your poops? Potty bucket. Poop bucket. Don't put your head in it. I'm well, just, you know, making sure it's fresh. Oh, oh no, please. children can fall into bucket and drown. Oh! Oh no! no. No. Show the camera the image. No. 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 Wesley, no. no. He died the way he lived. <laughs> in screaming cold. and covered in poop. Yeah, this works. Yeah, I could be shitting all over the place right now. This is great. Whoa, SOS emergency food ration. This has nine biscuits. Wait, is this in French? Wait, have the French come to save us? Omelette du fromage. Quelle condition? I mean, I guess if I'm got nothing else. Not bad. I think it's pretty good. You think so? This tastes like everything they sell at Starbucks. And it's gonna save my goddamn life. So show some respect. Water! This is water? Pouches. Give me a pouch. This is a taste test. Uh, it says drink minimum two bags per person per day. So if you're really in a bad place, this is, you need two of these. It's a little weird to drink it out of a pouch with no straw. Yeah, it's, it should have like a Capri, Capri Sun. Sun. Yeah. yeah. So imagine a situation, you're not gonna have electricity. A crank flashlight, I've always wanted one of these. Oh, I have one of those. How well do they work? They work as much as you crank them. <laughs> okay, it's not a toy set. Well, I'm playing with it, so it must be a toy. Okay, okay let's try the radio now. AM always has a uh, religion. <laughs> Help! <laughs> Help us! Help us! What is this? Oh, I think it's a solar charger? Charger, because it has a cool. Yeah. Bronze on the chest. Uh-huh. Juice in the veins. Sure beats doing this. <laughs> well, we don't want another caller. <laughs> no, oh, God, no. no. Taking a first aid course isn't a bad thing. Three hours out of your life, learn some basic first aid, how to do a tourniquet, how to do a bandage, right? Simple things, but they could save somebody's life. Now, American Red Cross also gave us a uh, first, first aid, aid kit. kit. <laughs> Someone saved the first aid kit. No. Oh no. A pen. A pen. To, to write love letters. Uh, rubber gloves for uh, rectal exams. Just a whistle. Remember in Titanic where she's like, <laughs> Is anyone alive? Out there. I've watched Titanic many times. <laughs> you know what this is? What? A mouth-to-mouth -mouth guard. No. That look very creepy, but are probably quite helpful. Try breathing into my mouth. <laughs> I, don't want, I can see this much. I don't want to share breath right now. La, 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 la. Ooh, a water bottle with a purification tablet. Cool. We'll remove over 99.9% .9 of Giardia. Dude, that's awesome. I hate Giardia. Oh yeah, map, map, map. Oh, I can see my house right there. Yeah. yeah. And there we go. And that's All the right. Right. Use a map. Oh, a blanket, of course. 
Oh, it's like the Jewish shawl you guys wear. The scarf I'm ready that you for guys my wear. bar mitzvah. <laughs> I remember I used this in the survival oh, video. You yes. get so hot. You know how they came up with this? Huh. This space program. Yeah, you can cosplay as a bar of Hershey's chocolate. You can pretend to be a pop tart. So it's like a makeshift tent. I've never pitched a tent. You never pitched a tent? I like that. Gloves? Don't need those. <laughs> Don't need those. These hands are made for grabbing. I don't know if we really need moist towelettes during an earthquake. Are you kidding? After all the buffalo wings I'm gonna <laughs> eat? <laughs> so, uh, this looks like, well, this is double some stuff on this table, but. But also, we're two people. If, if you're in a couple, you, you need a lot of stuff. But this is still manageable. Like, this will fit in, you know, a closet. Right, and we took it apart, but yeah. it was pretty compact. It was just in like several bags. Kind of make your list, and every time you're at the grocery store, maybe get an extra pallet of water. Maybe the next time uh, you get a first aid kit. You know, $5 here, $5 there, and you eventually build up. Those are things you can do that reduce your risk. My current plan of just relying on Ned isn't bad. He does have one of these bags, so that's good. But I should get myself a bag so that I can make it to Ned's house. And do it as much as possible so that you can plan to, say, 10 days. You can be self-sustaining on your own. If you want to see everything that you need in an emergency situation, just check out the Red Cross's app. It can get you all the information you need so you can check everything off that we've laid out here. You and I are uh, not prepared. Is but you know it? what? My dogs will be prepared because I'm going to steal this. Yeah, and I'm going to steal the rest of this, especially this poop bucket. Poop bucket. Who should we eat first? I, have, I, have, I probably taste the best. You think so? Are you so? Me? I have the most seasoning. Not a chance. Too lean. Look, I'm but definitely eating Just the Keith. flavor. No. I'll Keith gladly well do a marble. taste that test, but. That is flavor. Mm, I used to be fat, yeah. now I exercise. That means I'm marbled, baby.